Subuser is a set of scripts that work on top of Docker and aim to solve the problem that was expressed by this XKCD comic. The problem is that we have a lot of security for our root account in Linux, but our user accounts, where most of our important information is, isn't kept very secure, especially in from the standpoint of inner application security. If I have some application I downloaded from the internet that changes the way I look on my web camera or adds funny glasses to me, that application can access like keys to my internet banking account that are held by Firefox. Not exactly a great thing. Uh, Subuser makes each application really a separate entity. It puts it in a container and gives it a set of permissions. Firefox, for example, can access the internet and it can display windows and it can access the downloads directory, but it can't access my entire home directory. It has its own home directory where it can keep its configuration files, but it can't see the entire world. Its worldview is described by a simple JSON file. This JSON file tells which user directories it can access. It can access the downloads directory. Which system directories it can access. It can't access any system directories. Whether it can display windows. Whether it can play sound. Whether it can access the current working directory. And whether it can access the internet. Each application that is run in a sub-user container or a docker container with sub-user has a permissions.json file like this. Let's look at what the vim permissions file looks like. Vim cannot display windows. It does inherit the working directory, so it can access the files that it's told to open on the command line. If I write vim permissions.json, it can access the directory that it's called from. It can't access the internet. It doesn't need to. You may notice that the vim json file or the vim permissions file is much shorter than the Firefox one. That's because in subuser, if a permission isn't listed explicitly, it's expected to be denied. Everything is secure by default. Of course, running in Docker has more advantages than just security. Uh, we already know those advantages. You can install bleeding edge software that doesn't interfere with the rest of your system. You can run two versions of the same program uh, at the same time. Uh, you can reliably install hard to install programs, build things, and you don't have to worry about dependencies being different across Linux distributions. But Docker isn't meant for installing desktop applications. Daniel Miseritsky, who's an employee at Docker, did a little presentation on how to install Firefox. Installing Firefox in Docker was pretty simple. It wasn't any more different than any more difficult than installing a web server. But launching Firefox was really quite quite really quite crazy. Giving Firefox access to a volume and giving it access to the X11 server and giving it access to the sound uh, card is a big command and you don't want to type that every time you want to launch Firefox. You'd rather type Firefox and that's what subuser does. It takes this big command and it converts it to the permissions.json format which is really simple to write and easy to understand. And you don't have to type it every time you want to write, r launch an application. You can download subuser from my GitHub page, and it doesn't require a lot of dependencies. It requires Docker, Python, without extra libraries, and Git. I'll be doing another presentation on how to uh, run uh, subuser, demonstrating that it actually does work. And in the meantime, I'd like to show you uh, 
some things about how these subuser applications are defined. When you install subuser, you come with a directory called programs that can be installed. Here are some of them. LibreOffice. LibreOffice has a permissions file and a Docker image directory with a Docker file in it. You can add uh, new programs to the programs that can be installed simply by creating a new directory with the program name, creating a permissions file, and creating a Docker file. That's all. Uh, so installing programs that aren't in this repository is really easy, so don't be put off by the fact that there's really not very many programs there already. I'll see you next time when I show you how subuser actually works.